Theater 5, show number 40, A Genuine Grenote. The opening teaser runs 42 seconds, ends with theme up to conclusion. There's a two-second break here for the first commercial. The first act runs 12 minutes, 30 seconds, ends with a cue, the, gr the Grenote is supposed to be, followed by a music curtain. There's a two-second pause here for commercials two and three. The second act runs six minutes, 21 seconds, ends with a cue, Before the Next Dealer Arrives, followed by a music curtain. There's a two-second pause here for commercial number four. The closing follows and contains full credits. The show feed will begin five seconds from now. Here's the painting, Grandfather. I'll put your hand on it. Ah, oh, yes, it's beautiful, my boy. There's the blue sky and those lovely clouds. And here are the rolling hills, right? Yes, Grandfather. And here are the peasants having a picnic under the trees. Beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> Theater 5 presents A Genuine Granaut. Sorry I cut you out to the storm, Pat. Keep your eyes on the road, Miles. Yeah, I told you, a nice ride into the country in the sunshine. And look what we've run into. Miles, I think we ought to stop at the next house and take shelter. What next house, honey? I haven't seen a house for 20 minutes. I know. Oh, oh I take it easy, Pat. It's just that thunder scares yeah, me. Yeah, I know, I know. But I can't very well put my arm around you, so take it easy, huh? If we do come to a house, let's stop. Now, look, I want to get to that Arnold Blair's house. That's what I came for. If we take shelter, we can go on after the storm lets up. Oh, sure, sure. And find that some other art dealer has beat me to this Blair guy? Oh, Miles, what of it? Pat, darling, a chance to buy a work of art and make a quick killing on it like this comes very seldom, believe me. Well, I know the ad said a genuine granat, but what if it's not genuine? Well, if it's not genuine, I'll know it and I won't buy it. And, <laughs> and we'll have had a ride in the country, in the sunshine. <sighs> What I don't understand is why this Mr. Arnold Blair wouldn't know himself that a Grenade is worth as much as you tell me it is. Honey, Grenade was a painter, a master of watercolors. But after the first enthusiasm over the Impressionists, he sort of got pushed into the background. His paintings haven't sold for much for, oh, 35 years. But now, now there's a Grenade revival. Keep your hand on the wheel. Yeah, I'm sorry, honey. I got carried away. Anyhow, a granat can be worth quite a lot right now. I can make a quick turnover for upwards of, uh, well, 900% profit. If, if this Blair guy means what he says in the end. Oh, Miles, if we come to a house, let's stop. Yes, all right, all right, darling. I don't want the storm to frighten you out of your wits. I don't see how you can drive in this. Well, it isn't easy. You know, Miles, I, I don't quite like what you're doing about this granat. I mean, Arnold Blair, whoever he is, is obviously unsuspecting and... Oh! All right, honey, we'll stop at the next house. I tell you, I wouldn't drive through this rain if I didn't think it was going to be a mighty profitable excursion in the end. Well, that's what I mean, Miles. If this Arnold Blair doesn't know the value of a granat... Miles. Hmm, what? Isn't that a house ahead? Hmm, where? Uh, your side of the road. Oh, yes, yes, you're right. That is a house. Okay, I'll pull over it. Uh-oh, and there's no driveway. We'll have to run through the rain from here. Ready? Ready, I guess. Okay, here goes. Okay, honey, come well, on, I, hold my hand. I... Oh, I'm so... Yeah, yeah, well, at least we have a roof here. A porch roof mm. and leaky. Yeah. Well, let's see if somebody's home, huh? Well, I'll be darned. What is it, Miles? Well, here, here, look at this nameplate. Arnold Blair. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good omen, right? It's certainly strange. Imagine coming right to the right house. Well, that's because there isn't another house to come to. I've become convinced of that. Well, here goes. But, Miles, mm -hmm. don't you think there's something faintly dishonest about what you're doing? Well, why, honey? 
You buy for as good a price as you can, and you sell for a profit. But a 900% profit, or, or whatever it is... Honey, honey, uh, any art dealer would do the same. All I hope is that I'm first. Well... Hello? Uh, hello. Is, uh, Mr. Arnold Blair here? Uh, Mr. Blair? Mm hmm Well, gosh, I, I'm not sure. Well, I this mean... is Mr. Blair's house, isn't it? Well, yes, sir. Well, I've, uh, I've come in answer to his ad in a time. Here, uh... For sale, genuine Grenat landscape will sell at sacrifice, $75. Uh, that is Mr. Blair's ad, isn't it? Well, uh, uh, I'm not sure. Well, the ad is signed Arnold Blair, and it gives this address. Mr. Blair does own a Grenat, doesn't he? A Grenat? Well, yes, that's the French painter, Impressionist, early 20th century. Yes, I know. Well, has Mr. Blair got a Grenat for sale, or hasn't he? I don't know. Well, who are you? I'm his grandson. Do you live here? Yes, sir. Well, may we come in? I'm not sure my grandfather would want you to come in. Well, may we see your grandfather? I'll see if he's in. Oh, look, this is a very small house. You might even call it tiny. And you don't know if your grandfather is in it or not? I'll see if he is. You wait here. Well, I've never encountered anything like this in my life. Well, if that young whippersnapper comes back here and says his grandfather isn't in, I'm going to wring his neck. If he says his grandfather isn't in, we're going to turn around and get out of here as fast as we can, Miles. Are you kidding me, honey? This man has a Grenat for sale for $75, and depending on its size, I can resell it for anywhere from $1 to $3,000. Miles. Well? I'm afraid. Of what? Of that boy. Something, something's wrong, Miles. Yes, I know. He is a creepy kid. Well, I, I think there's something terrible going on in that house, or... Something terrible has gone on. Well, maybe, but that Grenade. Never mind about the Grenade or your profit. I really think it's dishonest anyway, Miles. And I must say, I value my neck more than a Grenade. Get... Well? My grandfather isn't in. Well, I don't believe that. He doesn't want to see anybody. Now, see here, well, now young let's man. Let's just go, Miles. No, 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 Pat. Now, see here, young man. Your grandfather advertised something for sale, so presumably he wants to sell it. Now, I demand that you let me in. Well, gosh, I don't know whether... Eddie! I... Eddie! Are you talking to someone? I'll be right with you, Grandfather. Please go away. Please, Mr. Leave. Blair? Who's that? Is somebody at the door, Eddie? Now, Mr. Blair, I'm an art dealer. I've come and answered to your ad. I've got my fiancé with well, me and... come right in, sir. Eddie, why didn't you show these people in right away? Well, I guess you've lost, Eddie. Come in. But please, please... This is my grandfather. Grandfather, these people How do you are... do, Mr. Blair? I'm Miles Wakefield, and this is my fiancé, Pat Tuttle. Oh, this is a lovely room, Mr. Blair. You'll forgive me for not getting up. I could find you all right, but it would be easier for you to come to me so I could shake you by the hand. You see, I'm blind. Oh. Oh, well, I'm sorry. We should have noticed. How do you do? How do you do? You have a nice, strong hand. It's very nice to meet you, Mr. Blair. And you have a very lovely hand. Now then, uh, sit down. I assume you have come to see the Grenat. Well, to buy it, if it's genuine. Grandfather, I've got to go to the kitchen. But we have guests, Eddie. But I'm cooking lunch. It can't wait. No, Grandfather. It's cooking and it might burn. Well, why don't you go and turn the gas off? I'm going to want you to come back and show the Grenat to Mr. Wakefield and Miss Tuttle. Well, gosh, Grandfather, I don't know. Eddie, I'm surprised at you. You go into the kitchen and do whatever it is you have to do, and then you come back here. Well, you could show... Eddie? Oh, all right, Grandfather. I uh, must apologize for my grandson's rudeness. It was particularly discourteous to you, Miss Tuttle. Oh, not at all, Mr. Blair. A, a young boy, I, I understand. No, I'm afraid you don't understand. If you met my grandson in any situation that did not involve me, you'd find him to be a rather charming boy. It's just that he feels that I must be protected and perhaps the word is babied. Oh, I see. Well, sir, uh, we were wondering... No, if you'll let me finish. What happened just now, Eddie's insistence on going to the kitchen to finish cooking my lunch, was simply a reflection of his great concern for me. It causes him to forget his manners. I could put it that Eddie feels he owes me something. Well, I'm sure he owes you a great deal, Mr. Blair. Eh, not so very much, really. When his mother, my daughter, died, he went on living with his father, but his father was an evil man, a brutal man. 
And Eddie was a child on whom he could visit his brutality. And you saved him from that? It was a difficult legal battle, and I won it, yes. And you know, while I was bringing Eddie up, I loved him beyond my power to describe. And he loved you, of course. I didn't know. The, uh, shall we say, difficulties that Eddie had to put up with while he was still with his father made him quite uncommunicative. I never knew whether he loved me as much as I loved him until I lost my eyesight. Well, as you just pointed out to us, he obviously does love you very much. Shall I tell you how much? Do you know what that boy did for me? I'd like to hear. Well, you have to understand that I've fallen on bad days. Oh, I was never wealthy, but I was comfortable. I had beautiful things. I liked beautiful things. The Grenat that you're going to see is the last of these, and I suppose, in a way, when I've sold it, it, it won't matter. After all, I can no longer see it. Yes, well, I'm, uh, I'm very sorry, sir. Well, several months ago, I reached the end of my financial resources, all but the Grenat. For a long time, I've been able to earn nothing for myself, and Eddie, well, he brought in a few dollars with odd jobs that he does in town, but, oh, suffice it to say that my need was desperate. And it was at that point that Eddie left me alone for three whole days. I don't know where he went, I suppose to New York. But when he came back, that boy put into my hands $1,000. My goodness. Yes, yeah, so where... Where would a boy that age he, get a thousand dollars? He told me that he worked for it, but I know better than that. For all I know, he may have stolen it. It raises a nice problem for me. After all, I am Eddie's moral preceptor, and perhaps I should have questioned him more closely. Well, no, I don't think so. Whatever he did, he did from love of you. And that's all you should think about, Mr. Blair. That is the conclusion I arrived at myself. I have taken that money, however it was acquired, as an evidence of the boy's love for me. I only pray he's not in any trouble. Well, if it's been several months... Exactly. Time is on our side, isn't it? But where's Eddie? He should have come back before now. Eddie! Eddie! If he had come back to this room as promptly as he should have, you would not have had to hear a garrulous old man telling you an embarrassing story. I think the story you told us is a beautiful one, Mr. Blair. Yes, Grandfather? Eddie, I think that these good people would like to see the Grenat now. Yes, Grandfather? It's raining out. It must be a dark day. Uh, yes, it is, sir. Snap on all the lights in the room, Eddie. Make sure that they can really see. Yes, Grandfather. You know, Mr. Wakefield and Miss Tuttle, each day I go into the room to which you will presently go... And I run my hands over the granat to assure myself that this last lovely treasure of mine is still there. Eddie, uh, take them to the granat now. All right, Grandfather. This way. Well, I, uh, I suppose I'd better snap on the lights. Yeah. Well, I... I... Don't understand. Where's the picture? Where's the granat? That black frame on that wall with the glass over it. Well, there's nothing but the glass. There's no picture in the frame. I know. I tried to keep you away. That's where the granat is supposed to be. do that, Eddie. Your grandfather's waiting for us. Please don't tell him what I've done. Well, there's a good deal for us to think about, Eddie. After all, you've taken that granat. You'll and... have to go back to him yourself. I can't face him, or you, or anyone. No, Eddie, now wait. No, honey, let him go. Miles, you see what's happening, don't you? Yes, it's pretty obvious. He left here and went to New York with a granat. Mm. It took him three days to sell it and bring the money back to his grandfather. Yes, I know, I know. But now what the devil are we going to do? What are we going to say to the old man? You know what I keep thinking of, Miles? What? That thing that Mr. Blair said just before we came into this room. Every day he comes here himself and runs his hand over the glass in that frame, consoling himself with the thought that the granat is still there. Yes, I know. How can we tell him that it's not there? Well, how can we fail to tell him, honey? 
There'll be other dealers in to answer that ad, and not every one of them will hear about young Eddie's trip to the city. Now, the old man is probably ashamed that he told us, and he probably won't tell anyone else. I know. And some dealer will come into this room and storm back into the living room and shout at the old man. Oh, Miles, what are we going to do? I don't know. I don't know. Well, Mr. Wakefield, what do you think of it? What? Oh, oh, the granat. Well, Are uh, all the lights on, Eddie? Uh, Eddie isn't here, Mr. Blair. What? Why not? Uh, well, I think he wanted us to be alone and, uh, and think about the picture. I see. Well, what do you think of it? I haven't seen it, so to speak, today myself. Oh, I do love to run my hand over this... I have this painting so indelibly impressed on my memory that I can tell what lies under my hand wherever I put it. Here are the rolling hills, right? Yes, Mr. Blair. And here are the peasants picnicking under the trees. Ah, uh, yes, yes, Mr. Blair. Oh, it is a lovely picture. I don't mean that as a sales talk. Uh, Mr. Blair. But... Yes. Mr. Blair, I wonder uh, if Miss Tuttle and I could be left alone with the picture for just a little longer. We'd uh, we'd like to talk about and it. And privately, of course. Mm -hmm. It's perfectly all right. Thank you. Well. Miles, I could cry. Yes, I know. So could I. But it won't do any good. What are we going to do? Well, I think we ought to find Eddie, wherever he is, and, and put it up to him. We're worried about what happens when another dealer comes. Hmm. Well, Eddie is going to be here when the other dealer comes, so I, I think we should talk to him. Sure, if we can find him. Our scared young boy goes to hide in his bedroom. Let's find his bedroom. Grandfather? No, Eddie, it's Miss Tuttle and I. May we come in? I suppose you might as well. Now, we uh, haven't come here to trouble you, Eddie. We need your help. You'd better close the door, Miles. Yes. Now, we don't know whether to tell your grandfather. How can I help you? Listen to us, at least. We know what you did, and, and we know why you did it, and, and believe me, we sympathize. We can either tell your grandfather or, or not tell him. And believe me, we don't want to tell him. Then don't. I asked you not to. Please don't. I... I think it would kill him. Well, I don't think it would kill him, Eddie, but it sure would shock him. And what we're concerned with is that someone else is going to come in answer to that same advertisement that brought us here. And whoever it is, he might tell your grandfather, might, might tell him in anger, and then what good would it have done for us to have kept quiet? Now, what we want to know is what you're going to do when somebody else does come. How do I know what I'm going to do? When you came here in answer to the ad, I, I wanted to kill you or, or kill myself or something. I... <sighs> I haven't slept ever since Grandfather put that ad in the paper. I don't know how I can face what's going to happen. I think I'm going to run away. No, no, don't do that. Now, wait a second, Pat. Eddie, what you did was, uh, was a kind of manly thing to do, but now you're behaving like a baby. Now, you get up on your feet, you hear me? Get up on your feet and come with us. We're going to your grandfather. <laughs> Mr. Blair, I'd say we've done all the thinking about this we have to do. Do you know... I'm not sure whether I want you to say you'll take the picture or not. It's the last of my treasures, but I do need the money. Well, if you'll let me have it, Mr. Blair, I'd like very much to buy it. I'm glad, Ma. I suppose I'm glad, too, Mr. Wakefield. It's a very lovely picture, but I can't see it any longer. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Clearing up. Mm hmm. So we get a drive in the country in the sunshine after all. And all it costs me is $75. Now, don't get grumpy about it. There's nothing that makes a man more ashamed of himself than doing something altogether wonderful. Oh, I don't know, Pat. I'm a little proud of myself. I'm proud of you, Miles. Mm. I wonder what old Mr. Blair and young Eddie are saying to each other right now. I wonder. <laughs> saying to each other right now. I suppose so. You handled it pretty well that time, Eddie. Thank you, Grandfather. 
Of course, we're lucky there was a girl he wanted to impress. I know. It's always easier when they bring a girl. Well, hang up another frame. I hope we can eat lunch before the next dealer arrives. <laughs> Theater 5 has presented A Genuine Grenaut, written by Robert Senadella and directed by Ted Bell. In the cast, John Gibson, Peter Fernandez, Fran Carlin, and Larry Haynes. Audio engineers, Bill Sandreuter and Neil Pulse. Sound technicians, Ed Blaney and M.C. Brock. Associate director, Bill Gately. Script editor, Jack C. Wilson. Original music by Alexander Vlastotsenko. Orchestra under the direction of Glenn Osser. Executive producer for Theater 5, Edward A. Byron. We invite and would appreciate your comments. Write to Theater 5, New York 23, New York. This is Fred Foy speaking. This has been an ABC Radio Network production.